Hi, I'm Morris. Uh, welcome to Theory Crafting Thursday number one. So this is going to be a new series I'm starting where I'm going to go over more more niche, more high-level concepts with more of my opinions injected into them. It's going to be less tried and true stuff like my, my, my guides are intended to be. It's going to be much more narrow audience uh, with some lower production value. So I can try to do these more often, maybe not quite weekly. I'll, I'll try. I, I have some ideas for stuff like this. Um, but I encourage people especially to discuss or even contradict me in the comments because, you know, like what we're trying to do here is, you know, push the, push how we think about things, you know, bring forward some more, more in-depth topics that maybe, maybe we don't talk about with like the greater community. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be going over something called threshold training, which is a practice method. I didn't really come up with it. I'm just giving it this name. Um, and we're also going to go over some background topics and uh, motivation, goal setting, and uh, practice structure. Um, or like thinking thinking styles. Uh, so yeah, I think a good start to start with this background is thinking about improvement curves. So look at this improvement curve, pretty standard idea. You get, you get good in the beginning fast, you get slower and slower as you go on but if you've ever improved at anything uh, you'll probably know that it doesn't actually look this smooth it looks more like a person with Parkinson's drew your the improvement curve I, I actually drew this but um, the curve is a lot bumpier than people realize you have little spikes you have little plateaus you have even like little places where it looks like you're getting worse and it's pretty common to have like these during these huge gaps and huge plateaus to get really frustrated especially especially when you're better right like um because like they get longer and longer as you as you get better uh, especially with the kind of game tetris is where you it's like it's all you um there's not really much to blame other than you as much as we joke about like rng game uh can really affect your your mental um so the name of the game here is to keep up your effective practice, keep up your motivation as you, uh, you know, hit these plateaus. So one way to stay motivated, obviously, is to set goals. And I, I don't know about the, I mean, I'm sure you guys might have seen this smart goal thing in your health class. I mean, it's a pretty like, well-known, well-backed by, like, different studies, um, or at least not. I don't know. It's taught in schools, so <laughs> I'm sure it's it's backed by science. But uh, it's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. Uh, so yeah, I mean, most of those uh, those terms should be pretty self-explanatory. I think relevant may be the only kind of murky one. It just means like it's actually going to help your ultimate goal. So our ultimate goal here is probably going to be get good um, at, at Tetris and. Uh, yeah, so I think the goal that most people will set is TR. Uh, like, set a TR goal. And in my opinion, I feel like TR goals are pretty bad if they're the only goal that you're setting. Because, like, there's so many things that just affect your TR that, like, aside from your skill, that if it's the only thing that you're looking at and you're just looking at your TR every day, it just feels bad to run, to do it, right? Like the amount of time that you put in like your tr is gonna like you'll you'll end you'll have days where you just end up negative it feels like gambling almost and i i know a lot of people have like ranking ranking anxiety and stuff from like grinding tr and looking at tr as their as their like measure of like how good they are um it just doesn't scale with the amount of time you put in which feels bad right it, it feels a lot better to be grinding something that will like it 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 just feels bad to go down, right? Um, and, and also, I think TR is not a very specific measure. It's very all or nothing. It's trying to estimate your actual like skill, relative skill among the community. Like how how often will you beat all of the people underneath you? It's Glico, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, next, uh, I mean, I'm getting feels like I'm just kind of hitting you with random psych at this point. But uh, so we're going to talk about outcome oriented thinking and process oriented thinking. Uh, I'm trying to apply them pretty loosely. Um, mostly, I'm what I'm trying to do here is set a framework for 
people to think about things and evaluate what works best. So outcome-oriented thinkers are going to, well, like they, they think more about the outcome, so they're probably going to get their confidence and their skill and their motivation from hitting goals. So uh, it's generally going to be easier to push yourself with this. Like think about that, like the, the rush of skill that you get when you, um, I just dropped some bottle oh, caps I was playing with, sorry. But um, think about that rush you get when you like hit a PB or like beat someone that you usually lose, lose to. And um, like that that's what motivates these kinds of people, right? Um, the problem I think with these is like it, it can like really, really motivate you to, to get better. And I think a lot of like our most quickly improving players, like they hit that PB re rush real hard, right? Like, and they have the skill to just keep setting higher, higher goals and just hit them, hit them, hit them. Um, because of the crazy hours they put in and like arguably like some natural, I don't want to get too into it, <laughs> into it, but, uh, yeah, um, the i think just as common though or like much much more common is like the burnout and like the frustration even even experienced by these like really fast improving players that when those goals are aren't achieved like quickly because rel relative to the amount of time you feel the gratification of hitting a goal it's f it's like nothing compared to how long you spent in like just grinding for for the next one right so you have this cycle of quick gratification to like okay what what now what what do i what do i hit next right it's like a yeah <laughs> um and i think a lot of people in tetris tend to tend towards this um because it's just the most like we're, we're, we're all we're, we're gamers we're, we're playing games like we're, we're playing this for the quick gratification right that's why we play games instead of like i don't know like getting hitting the gym or whatever or touching grass uh, but uh I think the other style of thinking, um, or I guess like looking at the game is they're going to be process oriented thinkers. So they're going to be looking at the, like the process of how things are done. So you're going to get confidence from like sticking to their practice routines, sticking to good habits, that kind of thing. And I think this is going to be way more sustainable with the right routines. I like because it's easy enough to just like you know hit your routine every day and then just i'm good right you could do that for the rest like you could just do that for the rest of your life you're not going to burn out from like having a goal that's too high, hard for you to hit but i mean there's like no payoff to doing a to doing a practice routine you know there's not really as much gratification from like hitting a pb or something and if your routine also isn't good it's you're just going to plateau right and if you're just satisfied doing the same routine every day, you're going to be satisfied with plateauing, which if our ultimate goal is to get, get good, get better, it's not actual, that's not actually helping us. So, I mean, it's not going to be a strictly binary thing, um, but definitely I think people are more like outcome oriented, especially with regards to like TL or something. I think we could, people could do with incorporating more like process oriented thinking into their approach, like, um, you know, try to stick to some routine every day to, like, continue to justify your skill, right? Like, to... Something I used to tell the players that, like, had trouble with panic at the top is just, like... Just, pr like... And they just, like, hate cheese or, like... Even... If, I know cheese isn't, like, the best analog for being good at downstack. But it's just, like, some confidence that you can... Like, I, like I've grinded this game mode. Like, I've... I've, I've done... Stuck to this every day. Like, I, I'm good at downstacking, right? Or how justified they are in saying that i don't know but like it just gives them the confidence to not panic in those situations which is the main important thing um so yeah it's just another source of confidence another source of information that you can get to judge your skill in the game it's a lot more in your control and it's just a lot more consistent it's is admittedly a less ex exciting so you know always you know set good goals and you know hit those pps it's fun um so finally, we come to the actual big topic of the video. It's got something called a threshold training. Um, so it's just like, don't look at the PB. We're going to aim for runs above a certain threshold score. So the threshold should be something that you can achieve at least once a day, but it's not like every time you play a game mode. So uh, example for me is that like my PB is like 23 second for sprint. A threshold I set for myself for a while was uh, like a 26 second sprint. Um, 
So the key idea here is that we're valuing our average performance over your ability to set a PB, meaning we're going to be completing a lot more runs. We're going to be, you know, f we're going to be thinking enough or like be f staying focused on like the things that matter enough that's like, you know, we have to, we, we need, we're going to be like building up good habits, but we're, we're in like not restarting every, every run or like doing random things so that we can hit PBs. But we're also not like taking it too easy that like it feels like we're not even practicing. Um, so yeah, uh, ideas for thresholds are going to be like, I don't know, like round numbers or your like 180th or 170th run, like your top 100, like, you know, set a threshold that like, we'll get, we'll get into that right now. So it works for both styles of thinking. I'll go over. So like for goal, I mean, goal oriented, outcome oriented, they're the same thing. I just used a different term by accident. Um, the idea for this technique was actually stolen from Leonid, who is the oldest sub 20 sprinter at like 30 plus years old. He's been playing for like a really long time. And he did not get PBs very often, and despite his like hours upon hours upon hours put into sprint, and uh, but one way I saw he he used to stay motivated. This is when I back when like I lurked in the community and I didn't say anything, but I saw him posting like four wide, like oh I I pushed all the sub twenty fives off off my top two hundred leaderboard, and I was like oh that's kind of cool, right? It's not a PB, but like it definitely. It's it's showing something, right? It's it's something to be proud of. It's something to justify your. It's a goal to hit, right? Something to stay motivated. And um, yeah, so he was able to set these small goals, and now he 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 hit his ultimate goal of being sub twenty. He also didn't play verses at all. He just he just sprinted, and I cannot imagine how that must have felt. So taking anything from that guy, probably probably a good idea. Um. Second, uh. So yeah, sorry. Um. Yeah, so you try to get your threshold out of your top 200. That's that's the idea here. Um, I think, I don't know how many runs Tetrio stores. I don't play Tetrio enough, but um, I think it's easier to do on Dressers. It's just because I like playing Dressers. I think Dressers is better for single player in general. I think Blitz is a bad mode because of uh, leveling. Eh. Or it's, just, it's just like less, too many variables at play, I feel like. Especially with the gravity and stuff. Um... Next is uh, how you can apply this is like as a process oriented kind of kind of training method. Um, so it's just like a tr a try and get one or two runs above the threshold every day. Uh, you can do this for like multiple modes every day, like do one for ultra, do one for like cheese or something, do one for sprint. You know. So an example of this is the daily cheese thing um, I did in my server last year, and we we people are still keeping it up. I've kind of fallen off, but I, I go back in, go back in and out every once in a while. Uh, so yeah, we, we just try to keep set a threshold for all of our, um, like some factor of all of our least block PBs. I think it was like 15% blocks above your, your PB. And we just tried to get below that every single day. And I think I did it in like March or something like for, if you could keep it for two weeks, um, like a month, I don't remember then you could enter a giveaway for a plushie, and I gave a plushie to Meppy. Um, I think I might do that again this year. I have, I have one sitting, I, have, I bought an extra one sitting around in my room, so uh, yeah, look forward to that, I guess. But um, now we're going to get to the big meaty slide, which is the discussion section and the caveat. So I'm going to come right out and say it. This is like false quote unquote improvement. We're trying, the whole idea here is that we're trying to pretend that this plateau is a line, right? Um, we're going to pretend that it can go, mon okay, I'm not going to use a math term. It's, we're going to try and pretend that it can always go up, right? It's, it's a way not to reward your actual skill on a given day or like, it's not tracking your skill on a given day. It's tracking the amount of effective practice that you've put in. So I mentioned this before, but it's not the kind of practice where you're going for a PB trying to hit like that dopamine spike of hitting a goal where you're restarting every run that isn't on PB pace. You're taking risks instead of like building up good habits for your end goal, which is probably going to be, you know, getting better at versus. And um, like it's, just like it's 
it encourages you to practice smartly and uh, you know not and, and stay motivated and like look at your progress for how long you've been practicing smartly or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, another thing about it is you need to choose like good game modes for your actual end goal. So if you were gonna like doing this to get better at versus, it doesn't need to be getting better at versus. It could straight up just be for sprint like Leon did or like for the daily cheese thing, it was completely impractical for someone like me to do daily cheese um, to get better at versus. My, my, my least blocks PB is way too low for it to be practical for me to be to be grinding cheese to to get better at versus but i did it because i wanted to get better at cheese right i wanted to hit a least blocks pb so i i eventually i ended my daily cheese last last year with um with block pb which was very fun um and finally i think because there aren't a lot of people that grind modes that often like people don't really like finish finish runs in this this way people definitely just run run for pbs right um like we're, we're hiding the plateaus in the skill curve because and we, we take advantage of that with this training because we're hiding the plateaus in the skill curve but if your top 200 actually reflected your like average performances um like this this isn't gonna hide this isn't gonna hide anything right like and as as you go on it's just gonna be like as soon as your top 200 matches your your like actual skill i wonder if this is this kind of training is not really going to work out anymore i haven't been applying it for that long and i just kind of got like got over my like sub 26 as a threshold right so in the beginning you'll, you're, you'll have a lot of success with this method because your top 200 you don't you probably don't finish a lot of runs especially for something like sprint so like you might just i might just run into a plateau again um it's a lot definitely a lot harder for me to hit a sub um 20 25 run than a sub 26 run but uh you know i think at that point it's just trying to tune the thresholds better that's why i think if you're trying to do like um like think about it as a goal to like get something out of your top 200 it's usually smart to do like your 170th 180th run so that at least you're at least more often hitting your goals and like feeling little dopamine rushes and uh but yeah that's just some of my thoughts on like how this might be bad um or could be bad i i think it's good like it's just a way to measure your effective practice and, like measure like how effective your practice is and like how how, how much effort you've been putting into your practice I don't think it can be bad, um, and like the but there's always it's just like how you can set up your practice in such a way that it's it's actually going to benefit your actual your your goals. Like there's something to be there's caveats to every single practice practice like single player mode. None of them. I mean, I don't think any practice mode is should should like just replicate verses because then you should just play verses. Um, but like playing ultra isn't going to be like a perfect practice exercise playing cheese isn't going to be a perfect practice exercise playing like i don't know like the apm survival mode is not going to be perfect practice exercise it's just like there's so many different things to work or tinker around with and this is just basically one extra tool in your toolbox to set up routines or practice for yourself and stay motivated with it you know put a like a carrot in front of you to work harder <laughs> i don't know uh, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Also, if leave any any comments about what you think about this format. Regardless of what you guys say, I'll probably keep uploading these kinds of things, but I'll, I'll at least try and tweak them towards what you guys might like, but is also realistic for for my uh, the amount of time I'm willing to put into these things. I recorded this. This actually took me way longer to record than I thought. It, it, I recorded this like five times. And uh, but yeah let's uh let's hope to see you next week yeah